with all the hype around the 2018 Mustang GT, there are some Mustangs that have been forgotten, I feel like. Some Mustangs that are a great value on the market today that have been overlooked. Maybe we've forgotten about them with so much focus on the new 10-speed transmission and the Mustang, quarter mile times. Maybe we've forgotten about driver's cars a little bit, what it's like to shift your own gears, what it's like to be in a car that's a little bit more lightweight, what it's like to hear road noise into the cabin, maybe feel the road a little bit better through the chassis. So this is a very special Mustang. This is the Boss 302. It was offered from 2012 to 2013. And today we're just going to take a look at this Mustang and look at some of the specs and some pictures. And I want you to let me know in the comment section if you think this is a great value or not. We're going to look at some for sale and the classified and we're going to show you the price ranges and what kind of a car you can get for the money. And would you do this with your money or would you buy a 2018? Because these are going for about half the price close to half the price of an 18. And the newer technology is great, but from my perspective, this is a great driver's car. So it's not as fast as a new Mustang, but there's just something about it, the noise and the feel. And I'll, I'll get into the details of that as we go. So let's just look at the Wikipedia because I'm not gonna write all this down and try to present it in a fashion that's unique. So let's just talk about it. So basically, I'll try to paraphrase this, but previously the Coyote uh, 2011 was introduced. Then they, they named it the Roadrunner for the Boss 302. So it's got forged rotating assembly, which means you know uh, crankshaft and rods and possibly pistons, although they don't get into it. So some of you guys that are more, if you happen to know if it does have forged pistons or if the rods are forged, just let me know in the comment section. <clears throat> different uh, port, you know, the heads are ported, different cams, um, intake. So basically, this is a higher flowing engine. So what I have been told is that the the bottom end, meaning the short block, meaning the rotating assembly, is stronger for boosted applications. So if you do want to get one of these cars, you can run a turbocharger or a supercharger, and this engine holds up better than just the regular. 2011 uh, Coyote. Something to note. Although this is, this car is not really, this is more of a road racing car more than a, a drag racing car. So a supercharger wouldn't exactly, some people don't like to do that. They kind of frown on that, thinking that it's kind of uh, sacrilegious or something that you're putting a, it would be like taking a GT350R and putting a, a Whipple on it, which, a Whipple supercharger, which a lot of people do, but Anyways, if you want to put the supercharger, it will handle it for sure. It lost a little bit of torque by increasing the horsepower up top. Now this car still has a solid rear end. Remember that the axles uh, didn't come in until the year 2015. Uh, it uses carbon fiber plates and the limited slip. That's interesting. It does have an optional torsion. Now the bosses have a quad exhaust, but it's side pipes, so it has side pipes and rear exit tailpipes, and from what I hear, there's a baffle or like a restrictor plate, kind of restrictor plate, it's such a funny word, and then uh, you can adjust this. I don't know exactly, maybe you can let me know if you have one in the comment section, how, how that works uh, specifically. So there is some type of side exhaust, and it's there's some disc, it says, that are removable and there's a spacer plate, so it has to match the aftermarket bubble pop. So the Boss 302 basically has higher, higher rate springs, stiffer bushings, larger rear sway bar. It's lowered about half an inch in the front. The shock absorbers are adjustable, which is cool. So you've got adjustable uh, suspension. So, you know, this car is really for road racing. And I got to drive one not very far, take it. I was literally... I was parking cars uh, in Malibu. I had, a, I had a job where I would park cars. It was probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. I got to run around, get great exercise, get a suntan, and drive sports cars in Malibu. Super cool job. So a guy came in with one of these, 
And I didn't know what it was because I wasn't up to date on the modern Mustangs or any modern cars for that. I was still stuck 10 years ago. So I just remember sitting in it and I remember the Recaro seat was like, oh, this is okay. This is, this is, this seat feels amazing. But then I grabbed the steering wheel and I was like, okay, this is good. Grabbed the shifter and the, it felt like it had a short throw shifter, but that it was, it was factory. It was OEM. So, I mean, the feel and then the pedals, just everything feels perfect when you're in the driver's seat of one of these cars. And I didn't have to, I only had to be in the car for five seconds to notice this. I mean, it's just way ahead of everything else. And, and that's really important, the way it feels from the driver's seat. It feels like you're in a, a race car. Now, if you're going to compare this to the 2015 GT, the 2015 GT is a little bit faster. The performance pack is a little bit faster around the, on the round of racetrack. But... Is it more fun? The 2015 has more sound insulation. It's heavier. It does have independent rear suspension. Um, but there's a little bit of a disconnect because the car is heavier and you have more sound insulation. So you don't feel like you're doing as much as you are. In the 2015, you're going really fast, but you don't realize it. And I'm assuming that if you're in the Boss 302, it would be the opposite because you can hear more road noise, you can hear the exhaust is louder, and with the solid rear axle, it's probably more lively feeling, and the shifter feels tighter. So, you know, the Boss 302 is really the driver's car. Um, and for the price, we're going to look at the prices in a second, but the prices are down really low. So, okay, the curb weight's 3631, but I saw another number where it said something was down into the 3400. I believe it was over here. This is car and driver. And let's look at the weight. Okay, this one says 3666. So it's not as light as I thought it was. I thought somewhere it said 34. Okay, anyways, carry on. So it does have a 7,500 RPM rev limit, which is really cool. Um, and it has an altered, you know, stability and traction control system. So let's look at the, let's look at um, 0 to 60 is about 4.3 seconds. Quarter mile, 12.8 at 113. And miles per gallon, 17.26, if anyone cares about that. Um... And it's comparing it to the GT500, which is pretty interesting. Because, um, you know, the GT500 has so much more power. So you can read the details in here. But let's look at some pictures, see if that's something you're interested in. It's just, the, the, the thing that stuck out to me about this car was the seat, the shifter, the pedals and the steering wheel it like it just feels perfect like the shifter feels perfect the seat feels perfect it feels like you're in a little race car to be honest i'll let these pictures load up and then let's here they are and then we're going to look at some um we're going to look at some prices so let's look at some prices so these are nationwide this is a nationwide search for boss 302s and i made sure that these don't have any accidents, no frame damage, no fleet. They were never part of a rental company. So let's look at these. This, this is a 12 with 27,000 miles. This car's going for, it's listed at 26. So you could probably get this out the door for 25. Now, cars that you can get for 25,000. You can get a new Honda Civic. You can't get a 2015 GT Premium Performance Package. You can get a base but you can't. So there's the nice racing seats. This short shifter. I mean, just that. Just the short shifter and the racing seats makes you feel, makes you feel like you're in a. Just it just changes the whole thing. And then you're gonna have stiffer suspension, and the fact that this thing revs to 7,500. Now, if I'm if I remember correctly, this has a track key, so there's two different tunes available. One for the regular key and one for the track key. You boss 302 experts, let me know in the comment section. So, I mean, do you think this is a good value? So here's one. This is a high mileage one, 86,000 miles. 
2013 year model, but it's that cool color. It's this green color. I think the green's cool. It's this pearl green. What do you guys think? So, anyways, that's where the prices are on these. Now, would you get a 2015 or would you get one of these? And another thing to notice is these are almost half the price of the 2018s. Now, I'm not comparing the two. They're totally different cars. But the price is so low on these, that I feel like it's just a gem. It's kind of overlooked a little bit. And it's a driver's car. It's not a drag car. It's not a numbers car necessarily. It's just a car that is great at the racetrack. It's simple to work on. It's high revving. And it's a rear wheel drive car for it. I mean, it's a, it's a twenty five thousand dollars essentially. You know, these are a little bit above twenty five, but these are all negotiable prices, obviously. I love that green for some reason. So, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, this is an undervalued? Uh, this is a good proposition for twenty five thousand dollars. Like, would you rather have this or a twenty fifteen? If it was going to be your weekend car, I'm not talking about daily driver. If it was going to be like your weekend track car, I mean, obviously you'd have to go with this. So, anyways, one of my subscribers mentioned it, and it just it does seem like it's overlooked. Definitely seems like it's overlooked car, and it seems like it's a great value. I just want to do a little quick video, guys. If you have any questions uh, or comments, let, or want me to do videos on uh, looking over some other cars, just let me know in the comment section. Thanks again for all the new subscribers. I really appreciate the support. We'll keep pumping out news as we get it about the 2018 Mustang, and we'll keep talking. And um, as the news comes out, I'll keep covering it. Thanks again for watching, and let me know in the comments section if you think this is a good value or not. And if it's not, what would you rather spend your $25,000 on? What's a For twenty-five grand, what would you get instead of this? Let me know in the comments section.